Massive upgrades planned for the health sector. Health Ministry driver dies in apparent execution. Burpees River Taxi back in service. And racism in Guyana. These stupid conversations. I'm Enrico Bolforda and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. Within weeks, the president said the government will sign a contract for six regional hospitals worth US $180 million. He also announced that the government will be signing another contract for over a US $175 million for a modern national maternal and child care hospital. Additionally, the government is working on four major telediagnostic centers in regions 1, 7, 8, and 9 that will upgrade to regional hospitals. The police are currently investigating these circumstances surrounding the death of 66-year-old businessman Hamid Sharif. Yesterday afternoon, Sharif suffered a seizure before collapsing at the wheel after he pulled into the Rupert's car station on Rupert Gregg Highway. According to police, prior to the seizure, the deceased had a history of traveling with high cholesterol and a heart-related condition, whatever that means. He was pronounced dead on the scene. I say whatever that means because... I don't often hear of people with high cholesterol and heart-related conditions dying of seizures. Maybe heart attack, but not seizures. But anyway, the post-mortem will give us the answers. Last night, a driver employed with the Ministry of Health was seemingly executed in front of his family. 43-year-old Colin McPherson was shot multiple times by a lone gunman while liming in front of his home in Deefield, Sophia. According to eyewitnesses, the gunman was dressed in a blue shirt, dark-colored pants. He was slim and fair in complexion and was wearing a blue face mask. After shooting the father of four at least three times, the gunman fled the scene. McPherson's whole family and some friends were home at the time of the shooting. They all ran and hid when the gunman entered the house. The police said that recovered CCTV footage will be reviewed in the investigation. Now it's time to tell you about the best buys car of the day. Currently on sale is a 2017 Toyota Rumi. It comes with Bluetooth, mug rims, new tires, TV, CD, stereo, fog lamps, bar camera, and much, much more. Buy cash for $3.15 million. I'll pay as low as $630,000 down with around $60,000 monthly for five years, and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit the showrooms at Lot 171, Peter Street, Queenstown, or Lot 2, Lamar Street. And tell me you can for this sweet deal. Approximately 37 households are affected by flooding in Lab Island, Kwakwani, following intense rainfall over the past few days. The CDC has indicated that it is prepared and ready to lend support to communities in Kwakwani and other parts of Region 10 that are affected by the flood. Apart from Lab Island, residents of Landersville and Araima are also inundated with water. In Landersville, the Community Development Council is working closely with the Regional Democratic Council to assist residents who may need to relocate if the floods intensify. To date, regions 2, 5, 9, and 10 have reported significant flooding. In region 9, at least 130 persons were displaced by rising flood waters. Family members of 30-year-old Dean Raj Singh, the man who was shot dead allegedly by police, are refuting the cops' version of events. Police claim that the man first opened fire at the ranks, causing them to retaliate. But family members say this is untrue. Singh's relatives all argued that the man had been unarmed at the time of the shooting. One relative stated that the police got tired of chasing him, so they just shot at the fleeing man instead. While they admit that he was abusive, they believe that he should have faced the law and not summary execution. Nevertheless, the police OPR has opened an investigation into the matter. The Burpees River Taxi Service was recommissioned today. Free transportation for school children and old age pensioners has also been restored. The service will be made available from Monday, May 30th and will run from Monday to Friday during peak hours. Other persons wishing to utilize the service will be required to pay a fee of $140. It's just 100 to cross the Demerara, while river crossings are always considerably more expensive in Burpees. Milky support us more, why don't you? Anyway, for the best crotch in Guyana, wait, that should read, for all size of clutch discs and pressure plates for heavy-duty trucks in Guyana, check out Powered Automotive. Get this and other high-quality truck parts at the lowest prices. Visit them at Lot 1161 EE Eccles, or call them on telephone number 6970171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy-duty truck parts store in Guyana. Investigators have arrested the prime suspect in the murder of 21-year-old overseas-based Guyanese Lakan Chatterpole in Crabwood Creek, Upper Quarantine. 
and they have placed the suspect before the courts. On Tuesday, Leon Gonzalves, also known as Never Please, appeared at the Springlands Magistrate Court where he was charged with murdering Chatterpole on March 9th. Gonzalves was not required to plead to the charge and was remanded to prison until May 31st. On Tuesday, the local content secretariat was commissioned. The secretariat is mandated to create and maintain the nation's local content register of qualified clients and companies in the oil and gas sector. In February of this year, the government allocated 22 million Ghana dollars to begin works on the establishment of the Secretariat. The register will be available by the first week of June and is expected to be updated regularly. In addition to creating and maintaining the register, the Secretariat will also be responsible for implementing the Local Content Act. The Local Content Act clearly defines what is a Guyanese company and who is a Guyanese national thus who can participate in the local content benefits. Next week, Tuesday, GCOM is slated to finally commence discussions on the proposed amendments to the representation of the People Act, weeks after Chairperson Claudette Singh made submissions to the government regarding said act. The decision was made at Tuesday's statutory meeting, and hopefully they won't renege on this one. It might not be robbery season, but the streets are still mean. That's why you need to get security for your home and business through Sheriff Security Service. Sheriff Security offers well-trained guards, armed and unarmed patrol, marine patrols, canine services. These people even got drones. Why? Because your security is their highest priority. You've seen the rest. Now hire the best. Hire Sheriff Security Service today. Now for today's oil update. The government is moving full steam ahead with their plans to construct the gas to shore energy project, with the president announcing on Wednesday that proposals are expected from the pre-qualified bidders in two months' time. Requests for proposals will be published within two weeks. Back in January, the government's propaganda wing, DPI, reported that 12 companies had submitted bids for the onshore plants. Guyana plans to slash its energy costs by 50% and has eyed the development of 500 megawatts of new generating capacity. The gas to energy project plays a key role in this plan. Now for our stupid news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? Just about any talk about race in Ghana, especially if it involves anybody over the age of 50. I mean, honestly, it might sound ageist, but seriously, it always devolves into a competition about who had it worse and who's the real guilty race. Well, newsflash people, the folks who planted the seeds of division left years ago, decades ago. In fact, they left before a majority of this nation's population was even born. And it's been like a weird game of racial tit-for-tat between the nation's two biggest races ever since. Meanwhile, indigenous Chinese and Portuguese are just sitting on the sidelines watching two groups of brainwashed people accuse each other of being more racist than the other. And to top it all off, they invoke the names of two old dead guys whenever they want to score cheap political points. Honestly, folks, I don't have any solution to offer on this one. This is just a rant. But all I'm saying is that we do have to do better if we truly want to have this one Guyana the president speaks of. Because all I can say is that racism, or at least how we discuss it in Guyana and our understanding of it in Guyana, is pretty stupid. Now for our uncut news, views poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Ghana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it least to us. Last night's question was, what question do you have for me, Noriko? Clyde Bryan asked if a government can swear in on a Sunday. Is that disrespect in the face of other religions? I mean, well, one could consider this that, but honestly, I find it odd that any government business is done on the weekend. I mean, come on, business hours are between Monday to Friday, and it's not an emergency, so just save it for those days. Sakani Bell asks, why is it that we keep on voting for these natural disasters and place them there to serve us, just to devastate us and dictate us? I also said that we need more unity among our people to hold these people accountable, or at least drive a bit of patriotism in their hearts, because I guess the money and power corrupt them along the way. Indeed, I agree. It's terrible the situation this country's in. Hopefully, we can bring about some change together. And, on a similar note, Sharon Davis asks, if the real me would ever run for president of Ghana. Maybe. You know, we'll really just have to see what the future will hold. But I'm honestly honored that you even think I should run for president. Now, before we get to tonight's question, you can multiply your cash by selling Digicel Top-Up. This is a legit way you can inspect money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a top-up vendor quick and easy by linking with Cellular Puss. Call them on telephone number 685-3109 for more info. Now for tonight's question, I want to know, do you feel that the government is doing enough to support the youth? And if not, what programs should they implement to assist the youth? 
I want you to think about that question. Tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out on Monday for another. Until then, I'm Rico Bullford saying, have a great weekend, and as always, don't drink and drive, or we'll end up on Monday's episode the hard way. Ha ha! Good night, folks.